I started off with Man. them. The, so, so I will say my my guess for the second picture was Phantom of the Opera because it seemed very theater esque. Yeah. So that kind of got me to the right track at least. Is this that? Box I don't know what this game. Of... Huh? Huh? Is this that box office game? It's a different game. It's like it shows you pictures from the movie, and you have to guess what the movie is. Oh, I fucking we crushed just that. We just ruined today's, but. I'd fucking crush that. I'm a big fucking big movie guy. Yeah, you're a big movie guy. Big movie guy. Actually, the biggest movie guy. So, if he you... only likes he only likes good movies too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, come on. I don't get time for no, bad movies. He has no time for your uh, Bruce Almighty's and your. Uh... You really just going to bat for Bruce Almighty, huh? This is... Mike, only you... because Evan Almighty was on yesterday, and I was reminded of the conversation. Okay. All right. All right. Fair. Fair. Mike, do you like Bruce Almighty? Where do, where, where's your definitive stance here? I don't think I've ever sat down and watched it. You're you're a better man for it. I, w- I will say, this is all sort of related. I, the other night, I wanted something, you know, just something very very low, low maintenance, low, low, I don't have to commit too much. I just want to watch something, you know, something make me laugh, go to bed. And I was telling Mike, I don't think I ever sat down and watched Zoolander in one sitting before. Like, I think I've seen... The movie, I just don't think I've all seen it at one time. Okay, so I threw fair. I threw Zoolander on on Netflix, and I will say, definitely some jokes don't age well. Like, I'm sure, the movie doesn't stand up as well as it did. Uh, it's it's twenty years ago. It's definitely an old movie. Uh, it's definitely not not really a a strong film. Uh, to to revisit many many years later, I will say. Yeah. Well, they tried. And it didn't work. Yeah. So. Wait, they did? They made a second Zoolander? They made Zoolander 2. Like, they made Zoolander three years two. ago. What? I, I thought I was saying that to you. I said when you would ask me if I'd rewatched it recently, and I maybe I never completed the thought, was, but I thought I might have tried to rewatch it before watching the second one. But I remember watching the second one on a plane, and I think that was like an impromptu decision on my part. So I probably mm-hmm. didn't actually get around to rewatching it first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it's fine. I mean, there there's some funny lines, there's some, some funny moments. Uh, Will Ferrell is I of remember, course very good. I remember it being funny, but I don't know. Like, I can also look back and and say like I don't know that I would enjoy it as much as I did before. Yeah, it was fine. It was it was a good in bed at night movie where if I fall asleep, I am okay with this. I didn't fall asleep until I, the movie was over, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I I don't think I knew there was a second movie. I have to watch this now, uh, at some point. Did you know there's a second Anchorman? Uh, I I don't hate the second Anchorman. I have seen that movie. It's not it's not the worst. But uh, did you know that there was a second? I don't know. I mean, there there was a sequel to Dumb and Dumber. There was. I didn't, I didn't watch there that. Were, there, there, there are three. Are three of those movies? Yeah. Three. I don't want to go off on a crazy tangent here, but this does bring me back to the conversation. It's all, it's all related because it was Mike and I driving into PAX this past week, but there was a conversation we had about Zoolander as well that kind of spawned off Zoolander where I had, I had posed the question to Mike, are we just done with like character comedies now? Like they don't really get made anymore, right? Like Borat is like the only one that exists currently as far Borat as... And that was recent too, like within the last few years, I, would, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. But is that the only that one been that's beginning of pandemic? That's that's out there now. Like, there's no one else doing character comedy movies anymore. Like Adam Sandler doesn't. Are are his movies all just comedy character comedies? I guess Hubie Halloween is kind of a character fucking comedy because he's Hubie, Hubie fucking Hubie do Hubie Doobie Luby or whatever the fuck his name is. The movie's terrible. Oh, he um, there we go. Character comedies. Like obviously, you know, we get we get the Austin Powers. We get. Uh, I still didn't look up the actual name of that movie, Mike. What was the name of the movie with with uh, Dana Carvey? Or, oh, Master of Disguise. Master of Disguise. Master of Disguise. Okay. Uh. Then there's like Mike made the differentiation of like SNL character movies that are kind of its own subcategory of that maybe because they're like characters that weren't created 
for the what about, movie. All right. I so I I had to look it up to see like what's come out for comedies in the last couple of years. Would you count American Pickle as a character comedy? I don't even know what the fuck that is. I had to look that. That up. was the Seth Rogen movie, right? That was the Seth Rogen film. Yes. I haven't seen it. I kind of forgot it existed. But he plays like he he plays like his great great grandfather or something. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I mean. Maybe I, I don't I don't know. Um, and then um, what was the other one I just looked at? Eurovision. I guess, yeah, maybe I don't know. Are they playing real people in that, or are they playing a made-up band? I can't remember. I cannot imagine that they're real people. Um, I cannot imagine that that film is based on a true story. I guess that's I guess well. Yeah, maybe that one falls in the category because the other one I was going to bring up, which I have not seen, is Bad Trip, where I don't think Eric Andre is playing. Bad Trip is just an Eric Andre. Like, it's just a ske- uh, an hour and a half long Eric Andre sketch. Yeah. So, like. So, I don't know if I would call that a character comedy. Yeah. It's just. I, I just, I, I don't know. It's, it's essentially the same as, uh, like, Bad Grandpa. Was that the name of the Jackass movie? Yeah. Yeah. Where Johnny Knoxville plays the old man character for an hour and a half. And, like, they do pranks as part of the film. I don't know. I don't know if where... I mean, I like them. Yeah. I watch them, but I don't know if they're considered character comedies. Yeah. I mean, I guess we got to find out what the, 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 the line in the sand is here for how these are being defined. What was the last I'm one that watching Eddie the Celtics game right now. Does Uncle Drew count? Does he have a movie? Uncle Drew had a movie. He did, they did have a movie, right? Oh, I yeah. didn't watch it, but they did do a movie. This is a this is this is a terrible terrible conversation. Welcome everyone. Why did Uncle Drew get a movie, but <laughs> fucking the the Six Flags guy never got a movie? He the yeah, Six that, Flags that, guy that, got that, got, that, a, got a new uh, got a new SNL sketch last week. SNL sketch, yeah. He got a new but, SNL sketch last week. Yeah. Yes, last week with Lizzo. Yeah. Yep. When was the last time the Six Flags? Wait, was it actually the actor? No. Is that actor still alive? I don't know. Were, are, we, are we working with the impression that he was actually an old man and yeah. not just a man and under heavy prosthetic? Uh, yes. I, I, I will say... He, when, he probably also was part of the Turtle Squad. When that sketch started, it was not clear that that was what the sketch was going to be. But when that actress hobbled out like with the shawl on and like bald head, I looked at Jen and I go, "Is this fucking? Is this the fucking Six Flags guy?" And then they fucking and then it, and then that's what it turned into. And I was like, "What is? Why is this sketch happening in 2022? What is going on?" They play the Venga Bus. <laughs> ah, yeah, at least the cover of it, if not the actual song. I don't remember. It was uh, th- they went all out in the sketch. At one point, there's like 10, 10 people doing it. I thought yeah. you were going to say there were like 10 people watching. Well, well I mean, because... you got me and Mike. That's two. Whoa, 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 whoa. I saw it on, that. I saw it on YouTube the next day. You are Mike giving him a view. You're giving him one Mikey view. Mike Mike saw it as a YouTube link on Facebook the next day. Yeah. I, I saw it and it said, it said like Six Flags guy or like, there's no way they're doing this, right? Nope. <laughs> and they fucking nope. got you, they're Mike. Hook, line, and sinker. They were like, "We got this guy. Fucking easy. Six flag reference done. What's next? What's the next? What? How do we get Mike next? What do we do? Solomon Paul Pond Mall. What do we do next? They bring out the um, the the Quiznos subs rats. The fuck are the Quiznos? Oh, I subs forgot rats? about those things. You forgot those. We yeah. Quiznos subs. You don't remember those commercials? I mean, if I watch them, I'll, 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 I, listen, listen. When it came to like the fast food sub game, Quiznos fucking fucks Subway shit up. They were also the first ones to do that toasted fucking sandwich. None of this fucking toasted bun. Su- yep. Subway copied that shit and then put them out of business. Uh, fucking Jared, that piece of shit. Anyways. Welcome. Jared is a piece of shit. Yeah, he really, really is. Welcome. Out of all the mascots, he was the one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not, not the literal clown, 
not not the fucking literal a uh, 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 a king, not not the not the purple fucking I, purple people eater grimace, no, just just a guy. Just the guy who was really a bad person. Anyways, welcome everyone to the Pass Control Podcast, a show where a couple of best friends talk about the latest in video games and nerd culture. Sometimes we have guests, sometimes we talk about the Quiznos fucking mousies too much. Either way, we have a new episode for you each and every week. As always, I'm your host, Brennan Groom, and joining me on this little quick, little mini, little little bonus, little pop here is the one, the only, the anime senpai, Mr. Michael Desir. Mike how are you doing on this lovely Monday evening? I'm thirsty. Ooh. Go to like Walgreens. Thirsty for shit. What are you gonna grab? What are you, what are you gonna snag, oh, Mike? What are you gonna What are you gonna pick up? You gonna one of those Cheetos Mountain Dews? If they had it there, I'll probably pick one up and as like a taste test, and then get something I actually want to drink. Fair, 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 fair. Listen, that when you do see one, if you see if they're single can situations. You know, mm-hmm. just text me and be like, hey, did you get this yet? And then, you know, grab, grab me a can. Just because I want to try it and I don't want to drink it. Like, I want to just try it and then be done with it. Nah. I mean, if you want to get one can right out of my house and, like, pour me some in a cup, that, I mean, that also suffices. That's that's fine, too. Certainly way to do things. Unless it's fire, then, you know, I'll buy a 12-pack. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't even I don't, front. I don't anticipate. I don't anticipate. Uh, and then rounding us out, because we again short short little mini episode, you know, short little mini cast. The Disney Daddy, Dominic Forty Dom, how are you doing tonight? I'm here in spirit. Are the Celtics winning? Are we about to fucking fuck the Nets? Are we about to fucking? They're up with 25 seconds left in the first half. Hell yeah. Maybe the Earth isn't flat, Kyrie Irving. That was Kyrie that wow. said that shit, right? Shots fired. Yeah. Listen, Mike. He flipped off. He flipped off the the the, the Boston fans in the garden. Big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. Huge. The worst mistake possible. Uh, anyways, so we we figured, you know, we 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 didn't record a normal episode over the weekend because uh, Pax East was in town, and it being the first in person. PAX East since the pandemic started we decided to go in a very limited capacity uh, so we we made some some minor appearances in the city during the event and hopefully have made it out unscathed we will find out soon but uh, you know we were we were as careful as could be in in that again very limited so the stuff that we saw stuff that we played stuff that we checked out is all very limited this year uh, not by choice, well, yes, by choice, but not because we didn't want to play stuff, uh, simply because we wanted to be as safe as possible. Um, but before we even get into that stuff, a couple of quick housekeeping things. Uh, this episode of the Pass Control Podcast is sponsored by our good friends at Goodnight Fatty from the Salem, Massachusetts area or the North Shore of Massachusetts on a Saturday, Sunday, or Friday. Don't know why I put Friday at the end you can head on down to one Washington Square and get yourself a delicious fatty I know Dom got some fatties this week Dom you get a chance to eat any of those bad boys up yet or what I had um a fatties and cream delicious as always Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did not try a strawberry shortcake yet I I, uh, I ate the strawberry shortcake yeah I ate the strawberry shortcake I was a big fan I wish I bought more it was very good it was very good Mike did you get cookies I did not oh Mike well, he did get cookies, but I'm eating them. Yeah. Yeah. He said he was going to go back on Sunday and get his own cookies, though. I know. I did say I was going to do that. And then and we, uh, we saw Nick Cage. Went to the movies. Went to the movies. Oh, and I got home. Mm. And I was just like, yeah, you know what? That's that's a wrap for the day. Fucking Nick Cage, Mike. You're fucking up your life. He fucked up your shit. Mm. Um, Nick fucking Cage. Was, was the movie good? Obviously, spoiler free was did you, was it an enjoyable film? Did you in, was, were you happy with your ticket purchase? It was, yeah, it was about what I expected. It was I think it was funnier than I expected. Okay, okay. Mike, I did come home and buy five Nick Cage movies on Apple TV. Did you really? Yes, uh, I mean, yes, five. I think that that is how they get you. That is definitely to be how fair. They get to you. be fair, Apple TV is currently running a five dollar Nicolas Cage promo so oh I mean, they're oh, just they're they're all in cahoots this is collusion at its best 
Uh, Mike, were you happy with your ticket purchase? Was this the right call for you? Yeah, it was an entertaining film, and it had a lot of heart. You know, I enjoyed the chemistry between Nick Cage and uh, Pedro Pascal and Nick Cage and Nick Cage. That was a surprising one, but it, it did work. And um, That was half a spoiler. Jeez, man. It is now that you said it. To be fair, Nick Cage and Nicky Cage. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a good time. I was still very confused by how <laughs> apparently I was supposed to scan my ticket when I walked in. I never saw the person and no one stopped me. So I just walked into the film. Wow. Mike's over here fucking buying tickets and sneaking. Throwing everybody's numbers off. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, yeah. what the fuck? Uh, Sapphire J said, how do you buy five Nick Cage films when there's only two national treasures? Uh, I don't know. Were there were there a couple of direct to DVD National Treasure films? No, I think it was just two. I don't listen. I'm not a Nick Cage. I I, I don't. I'm not familiar with Nick Cage's discography. I didn't buy either uh, National Treasure movie because they're both on Disney Plus. Fair. I don't know if Sorcerer's Apprentice is also on Disney Plus, but that would make three Nick Cage movies for Disney Plus. He's in Disney's bag. Listen, he's getting that. He's getting Sorcerer's Apprentice is on. Mr. I can search by Nicolas Cage. Mr. Michael Mouse is. You can. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Michael Mouse is penning that check for uh, Nick Cage on the reg. Uh, so yeah, pa- good night, fatty. Check him out on social media at Good Night Fatty, and uh, you know, educate yourself on these tasty, tasty treats. Uh, last bit of housekeeping news: the PTC Movie Club for April is Mike's pick, and it is Ex Machina. So that will be our next episode. So make sure if you want to hear us talk about Ex Machina to watch the movie of uh, just under a week left. So check that movie out this week or table the next episode so you don't spoil that movie for yourself. Or if you don't care, just listen to it anyway and listen to us talk about a movie that... Do we think I will like this movie? Wait, has Dom Uh, seen the movie? I have not. I still haven't watched it. So only I think only you and Todd have seen it, Dude, Mike. Your okay. your impression, you just off like a yes or no. Do you think me? Do you think I will like it? Do you think Dom will like it? Um, I don't think you will like it, but I don't think you like a lot of things. So that's fine. Wow. Okay. And then, Ex Machina, ninety two percent on Rotten Tomatoes. You won't like it. No, I'm, I'm in the eight percent. I'm in. That's I'm, not a. Br- that's I'm not a Brendan br- score. No, Brendan's like that fifth dentist that doesn't recommend Crest. Four or five are like, yeah, Chris. And Brandon's like, fuck that. Rub, t- rub dirt on your teeth. Hold on, Mike. Why are you hopping on the Todd bandwagon side here? Because you and I both don't like any of Todd's picks. So, like, what are we? What's going on here? Uh, hold on a second. I think we've talked about this before. It's not that I didn't like Prisoners. Prisoners was fine. It was like a decent film. Uh, but it's not it's your not type like of movie. movie. It's not my type of movie. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't like Hereditary. Swingers was just kind of old. Gross Point Blank was eh. And then, did he have another one? I don't remember. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm poo pooing Todd's picks. I think I recognize the critical acclaim of them. Yeah, no, I can listen to Well, the critical acclaim of of any of all of them besides uh, Gross Point Blank. I think that one was just for fun. Listen, I could recognize the critical acclaim of some of those films. I think Hereditary is a bad movie. Aside from the fact that I don't think it's a movie I like, I think it is not a good film. Like, I think it is. I, I think that's one of those films where people are people are pushing up their 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 spectacles and saying the manga was better. That's what I think is going on there. I can't wait to pick men as one of my picks. What is that? <laughs> is that a musical? I'm assuming. No, that's one of the upcoming uh, A24 films. You can't. You, you're picking musicals. You're going to call Audible in the middle of the season. No, it's it's it hasn't even hit theaters yet, so I can't yeah. pick it this year anyways. Can't yeah. pick it till it's available to stream. But let's let's probably just not pick that one, you know? Let's just let's just not no, pick you'll, that one. I will that absolutely seems hate like a movie, movie that you will absolutely hate. Yes, yeah. No, not not yeah. a not a film for me. That is that is definitely uh not in the not in the rotation for me anytime soon. It seems like there's like two actors in it and it's a horror film. So Yeah. Nope. Definitely all set with whatever the fuck that is. Um Oh, it's well, actually, I could pick Lamb, by... though, right? 
you could pick Lamb. I think Men is actually directed by the same guy that directed Ex Machina. Is it really? Great. Yeah. Now Mike's going to pick fucking this director's films back to back to back. You got Mike yes, on a whole is. fucking... What else oh, does this shit. guy direct? Person direct. Uh, let's double check. Buh, 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 buh. Annihilation, which I've seen, and the show Devs, which I've been meaning to watch. Okay. okay. He wrote uh, 28 Days Later, apparently. Oh, wait, did he direct Dread? Or... Hold on a second. I need to actually go to IMDb for this. He's linked to DMC. Like Devil May Cry? Weird. Yeah. He's a writer. He's a writer for it. He's a writer for like all the games. They're all listed here. Interesting. That is a that is a very interesting fact to it. Um so with all that being said, while Mike's looking that up, we again, very limited capacity at PAX, but part of the main reason why I wanted to go this year uh, was to just see people. Like I haven't seen Dom in person since PAX twenty twenty. So when I saw Dom on yeah, Saturday, like... that was the first time I saw Dom in person since PAX twenty twenty. Oh. I did not realize that. I I also kind of for like I knew it going down. I knew that was the case. But when I like when I had got when we had got there, I had kind of left my brain that like that is what was happening. And later on, I texted Dom and I was like, "Oh, by the way, it was good to see you since I haven't seen you in fucking two and two and a half years, two years and fucking two months or whatever." Uh, yeah, and I had commented that. It doesn't feel that way because we do this every week. Yes, that is also fair. But, yeah, like looking back, it, it is odd that it had been that long. Yes. Um, but that was the same thing. Like, you know, I got to see a lot of people that I interact with, you know, in Discord or elsewhere on the Internet playing games or on Twitter in person, either for the first time or since the last PAX. So it was good to see, you know, Cam, Jesse, Eric, Ken. Uh, Matt, all the all these people that uh, it's been it's been either never or a long fucking time. So that was like my main motivation for for going in the capacity I went. But with that being said, we did get to play a few things, so I figured we could just talk about those things. The first of being Match Point, which uh, did Dom play? I don't remember if Dom played. Yes. Okay. Uh, so. Match point here. It's a little indie game, two person studio, uh, Jolly Jolly Crouton Media. It is. Uh, I don't know. It, it, we we had talked to them a few different times and, and played a few different times. I don't know if uh, which time they had mentioned this little factoid, but the game used to be called Gravity Pong. I don't know if you guys were there for that. I I think I, I overheard I, him I, saying something. Yeah, about us. and it, you know for legal reasons they had to change that name <laughs> pretty quickly um which i think match point is a much better name it, it's very suiting for the game too but this game was basically uh i don't know if you can just do one on one but we were playing two on two um you know you are a pong like character you're just a straight like you know narrow bar i don't think these things had proper nouns or names but it was, you know, you are on two different sides of this little arena here. There's a ball that drops that drops to the ground, and you have to like, I mean, think about pong, but more aggressive with the ball falling down, and you can grab the ball and throw it, and like try to pull it and stop it. Uh, it is a very good couch. Like they're going to at some point add online, but there's a very good couch, like kind of. Fall, it's a put, good party game. Yeah, it's a great good party game. Yeah. Like throw that in there with Super Sports Match and or Towerfall or whatever other game, you know, you guys are playing in between, you know, some other stuff when you have friends over. Definitely something I hope makes its way to uh, you know, at least Switch, if not, you know, all of the other consoles. That way more people can get their hands on it. Because I believe as of right now it's only on Steam. But it's good stuff. I believe it's available on steam currently so you could in fact purchase it for yourself if that's something you want uh it doesn't as of right now have online but that is something that they are working on so if uh if you only have the ability to play with yourself right now if you're living alone or don't have friends over 
keep that in consideration. But I liked it. It was a good game. It was a good time. Uh, I wish we could have played more of it, to be honest. Uh, the other it is available on Steam currently. It is nine ninety nine. Okay, that's what I thought. I just didn't want to misspeak. Uh, the other thing that Mike and I just happened to be standing uh, with uh, a couple of friends of the program who were waiting for their media appointment, and we were—I mean, we were there in media capacity, but we didn't make any appointments. Um, we got pulled into the private room to play TMNT Shredder's Revenge, Mike. How are you feeling about this game? Yeah, um, it was fun. You know, I I don't have any nostalgia for playing the old TMNT games. I I think I played them, but they left no lasting memory in me, so I can't speak about it in that capacity. I feel like we definitely played one of the arcade games together. Yeah. Yeah, we probably did, but look like I said, it, it didn't leave like a lasting memory on me in a way where I could say like, oh, gee, oh yeah, yeah. Um, Have you not played it at BitBar either in the last however many years? No, you know, I go there. I, I go there. I either forget my tokens or I bring my tokens. and I just play uh, the Die Hard game. Oh, no. Crazy Taxi. Or Crazy Taxi or Moonwalker. Or Moonwalker. I think I think their Instagram, they have a DDR machine there now, too. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I I think I might have even seen it when I went there the last time I went there. Interesting. But again, I keep forgetting my tokens, and I wasn't gonna be like the guy who's there by himself trying to play DDR on medium. Yeah. Are you are you just not a beat 'em up guy, Mike, or what? What like is this I do not the like type of... beat 'em ups. I just yeah. I what I was getting at was I have no nostalgia for the old games. That said. I did enjoy what I liked. I just brought the whole nostalgia for old games thing because I feel like there were aspects of the game that would have probably hit harder for me had I had, uh, you know, that exposure to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I also feel like people that, like, have nostalgia for the game, like, I am I was already planning on buying this game regardless yeah, of, same. like, how it performed. So. Are you, are you not a... A turtles fan, Mike? Like, did the turtles not, not get you get you interested? I'm a turtles fan. Oh, okay. uh, you no, know, I I at some point had the first movie on VHS, and I think I watched that movie a lot as a child. Mm -hmm. You know, run home from school and watch the the cartoons. Fair. Just don't. Uh, don't what's your favorite turtle, Mike? I think my favorite turtle. As a child, I think I picked Michelangelo just because half of his name is my name. Like that was just his name that was my just name my too? logic. Yeah, I do the whole John Jacob thing. Uh, but Michelangelo was a party dude, and I'm not really a party dude. Uh, That's fair. So I'd probably be more of a a Donatello guy. Oh really? shit, a Donny guy. Yeah, I'd be more of a Donatello guy. What what draws you to Donny? Uh, cause he was a smart one. Oh, so you're trying to say you're smarter than me? I mean, your words, not mine. That okay. might be the smartest thing you've said, though. Fair, fair. Uh, I mean, it's fantastic. I'm kind of hoping you were just going to continue to use all the lyrics from the song. I was trying, I was really struggling. Like, I know what was his line, and I was like, uh, um, you know, the leader of the team. Uh, Don Hell does machines. There we go. Yep. Do you know the rest of the lyrics? Uh, Michelangelo is a party dude. Is, Raphael is cool but rude. Michelangelo is a party dude. Yeah, he and said the Michelangelo one. That's why I was oh, hoping I that when you, you said, you. "What do you? What draws you to Donatello?" I was like, "Oh, is he going to do the line from the song?" Um, yeah, like Dom said, this is something that I was already going to end up getting at some point anyway, just because a it's it's a turtles beat 'em up, uh, which you know I've pretty much played all of them at some point in my life. But also, more importantly, it is, you know, being made by Tribute in Dot Emu, who uh, I actually don't remember if Tribute worked on Streets of, the new Streets of Rage game, but Dot Emu did. But Tribute has also worked on a bunch of other games that I really like. So, like, the pedigree of the two developers behind this was already like, okay, it's a Turtles beat em up. It looks good. And these people are working on it. This is a very good recipe for something that I'm going to enjoy. Um, turns out i was right thinking that because 
the game plays as good as it looks. I mean, it's a beat em up. So you have to obviously understand that like it's not going to be potentially like it's not going to be this like super deep combat thing. Like it has some depth to it, but it's, you know, it's an approachable, you know, uh, side scrolling beat em up that has the turtles in it so it it needs to be that's something that anyone can get up and get into but there's some some ability there for some depth i'm sure there's going to be some stuff to make you keep playing or replaying through stuff i believe they said that there were going to be like little missions within levels that you could later kind of chase um i'm not sure what would be tied behind the lockables they were definitely a little bit on the quieter side when it came to what other enemies and bosses would be showing up and what, you know, what other locations or whatever, because they want to kind of leave some of that for the people who are going to enjoy the game when they get it. Um, but the game plays fantastically. It's so well animated in all of the turtles and, and April and uh, Shredder, because they are also playable characters, all have not like the four turtles, because it's a better comparison because they're four turtles. Is Shredder a playable character or Splinter a playable Splinter, character? did I say Shredder? Yeah, Splinter, sorry. Um, the four turtles, they could have very easily just made them the same animation, same stuff, whatever, with different weapons and different color bandanas. Instead, they all, obviously, aside from having different weapons, they have different little animation flourishes that really bring them to life. Like, they don't all animate and move the same. And some of their moves that are more standard across all of the characters, like if you were to, in most brawlers, if you were to jump and attack, you're going to like do like a dive of some sort, like forward. That's not the same for all of the characters, including April and, and Slinter. Um, but with the turtles specifically, all of their stuff is very different and a little more nuanced, which I think just A, adds a little bit more variety to all the playable characters. And I think it also just makes the game feel a little bit more alive. And I also thought that, like, the animation of the enemies and the backgrounds and stages were also very, they were they were very detailed in certain ways that, again, made them feel a little bit more alive for a flat game. Um, so I was I was really doing it, digging it. The music is very good. Um, the, it's the same composer that did Sonic Mania. Um, so very very good good jams uh, packed in there. You can definitely feel the turtles living through those new songs um and i believe they brought back the original voice cast for the turtles um yes i don't know from 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 the original cartoon is that cartoon right i believe so yeah so um very very cool very very interested to see how this game flushes out and looking forward to getting it when it comes out um it is also something that they would love to add more stuff to after the fact, whether it's, you know, new new playable characters, other types of DLC, or, you know, different variants of the Turtles and stuff like that. Um, talking to one of the developers, they they went into detail about how they would love to see, like, this certain thing from this era of the, con- like, the Turtles or whatever. They would like to be able to, like, pull in different things from the comics or this or the way they described it was different canons of the turtles and pull them all in to have their own types of things in there so if you know the game does well if nickelodeon you know says go for it we could see you know some more interesting things coming down the line for this game in the future but i do think from what i played and what what they had you know described as what is coming in this game i think it is going to be uh something worth your time and attention if you are interested in a Turtles game and or a Turtles brawler. Uh, The last thing that I specifically wanted to bring up, unless anyone else has any other games or tidbits to to bring up about their time this weekend. I was just going to say, it's weird that in 2022, we have the opportunity to get two separate Turtles video game releases. What's the other Turtles game? Our Bunger Collection. Oh, I keep forgetting about that. When you had said that the other day, when I, when I was like, oh, I played Turtles, and you assumed it was Kawabunga, I yeah. fucking forgot about Kawabunga altogether. Yeah. yeah I, it's possible that we get two separate re- Turtles releases this year. It is pretty dope. Strange. Um, I'm looking forward to the Kawabunga collection because I there are some of those games, like the Game Boy 1, I don't think I've ever played. I think there's like two or three games in there I've never played, so I'm looking forward to yeah. that. 
But I hope the game does well because I'd like to see more of that or I'd like to just see more of these studios kind of revitalizing things that were were good in the past. Because like I said, they made a sequel to the Streets of Rage. Um, I believe Dot Emo is also the studio that that did Windjammers 2. So like they're they're on a path of of you know kind of reviving stuff that people have a fondness for, even if it's you know a little bit more of a cult classic like Windjammers. But now let me check who is doing the Metal Slug Tactics. Is that also is being published by Dot Emu? So yeah, Dot Emu is like really doing the thing. They are getting out there and and taking care of some of these, you know. It's very specific franchises that people have a fondness for. So the last thing that I wanted to bring attention to was Lucid, which is a game that was not officially at PAX. It was kind of a you had to you had to be in the know to know that Lucid was was there. Um, and I am very happy that I was in the know. Shout out to uh, to Kyle over at Apogee for for pulling us in. But Lucid is it is basically a bunch. I don't know. I don't know about Mike, but it's a bunch of shit that me and Dom like kind of mashed into one fucking game. And I am very excited for this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a game that will be pre-ordered as soon as it's available for me. Yeah, like it which is, it is available on Steam to pre-order. I believe. Yes, yes. So if you if anything we're saying is of interest to you, definitely go check out uh, Lucid. Just search Lucid on Lucid L U C I D on Steam, and you should be able to find it no problem. But fantastic pixel art, like gorgeous, gorgeous pixel art. Fantastic music. I believe it's just all being made by one. One one gentleman named Eric. I think the music was done by his wife. Um, I don't know if she's doing the music for the whole game or not. But he's doing everything else. And it's gorgeous. You play as this little robot man. I think he's a robot. I don't even know. Did, did we ask if he, what the character was? I, I believe that he said he was a robot. Okay. so But I could be wrong. You're playing as this little robot guy who maneuvers in ways like celeste but also has other uh traversal options in a like a i'm trying to think of the best way to describe this because it really does just pull in from so many different games like celeste is definitely one of the big ones for how the movement looked in my opinion he described it as a celeste vania okay yeah that makes sense so there's it, it's a game that is not like so celeste there's no combat in Celeste, right? You're just j- jumping and mo- maneuvering, right? Um, I don't think there's combat. I don't recall combat. I think I things recall, attack you. I but feel like, yeah, I feel like I recall bosses for some reason, but maybe I don't recall any combat. Yeah. Um. So you do have weapons in this. Uh. You know, you have a unlockable stuff that. And it's not just like, oh, you have a, a hammer that you that does this type of damage, and you have this, this, this. And there there are going to be puzzles and, and rooms built around different move sets and tool sets. But each of these items also has some more depth to it with, like, holding up and charging and doing other things. There's a lot of different interesting, like, puzzle room mechanics that you have to, you know, clear in order to get through rooms in the, in the right way and open up the next doors and stuff um the game is still in development it's probably at least two years out which is unfortunate um so you know things could change and things might look a little bit different as as time goes on but this was like this was one of those things where it's like and i maybe it's too early to say this especially because this was a hands-off demo we didn't get to play anything we got to watch it being played and talk to about it um but this is the type of thing where you know, when I put the messenger in my hand at PAX for the first time, I got those feelings. When I played Shovel Knight for the first time, I got those feelings. When I saw Cuphead for the first time? Cuphead's another one. This is like one of those indie games that could be like, could be the indie darling of that year. Like it could be the thing that comes out and everyone's like, and even if everyone isn't 
looking at this beforehand, it comes out. I think enough people hopefully will see this and know this is the real deal. And this is something that you should keep your eyes on because it is is real, real good. Like I I again, we didn't spend a lot of time at the show. We didn't get to play really anything uh, by choice. Um, But if I had to say, even just knowing what was at the show and what was available to play, this is by far the the thing that stands in my stands in my brain. Just knowing that this was there and knowing that something like this is coming. Oh, so good. I cannot wait. Yeah, if you're looking for a game that it's obvious that the developer is in love with what they're doing, this is mm-hmm. like a game that you want to keep your eyes on. Yeah. Hearing hearing Eric talk about the game too made me think about it was- he was so excited. Yes. It it reminded me of when I talked to uh, Thierry from Sabotage Studio for the first time at PAX when they were showing The Messenger because you could hear both of them talking about their love for certain games and you could see that being realized in the game that they made. Um, whereas with The Messenger... You know, there were clear references and in, in, in inspirations being drawn from things like Ninja Gaiden, uh, you know, Castlevania, Metroid, stuff like that. And you could see that bleeding through through his eyes and through his vision in The Messenger. And knowing all the things that Eric was saying about Lucid and the references and inspirations that were that were at play there, seeing this in action makes me think, oh, okay, this is somebody who loves these games and wants to make their version of those games or mix those mix those loves together to make the game they want to play and honestly when someone's make when someone is making the game that they want to play that is an exciting place for me to to be at because you know that person is putting everything they can into that game to to put something out there that's beautiful so definitely check out lucid that is where i stand uh, anything else? I mean, again, I know we didn't really play. I don't know if either of you played anything else. I did not. Um, I, I avoided, I moved, maneuvered around the floor as much as possible to get out. I forgot that I wanted to check out WrestleQuest. Um, mm-hmm. Other people at the show told me that it was um, a good time. Mm-hmm. It's a wrestling RPG um, in the overhead, like RP, like JRPG style of like your Pokemon or like, mm, I guess Zelda, like th- that overhead style. Um, I believe Macho Man Randy Savage is the main character. Does it have actual wrestlers in it? It has at least Macho Man. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, but it's definitely a game that I meant to check out and it's a game that I'll have my eye on. Yeah. The, Another, there were two other games, or I guess three other games that I wish I could have checked out, but obviously was just again avoiding stuff and didn't want to do that. Um, were Demon Throttle, which was at the Devolver booth, uh, friend of the show, Lucas, um, I believe was actually the first person to beat it on hard at the show floor. So they threw him a free shirt. He was the first person to actually clear, clear it. Um, but it looks, like my absolute jam and what's very interesting about demon throttle is that it is coming to switch and it is only coming out as a physical game it will not be downloadable you have to buy a physical cartridge um so i need to remember to actually buy that because i forgot about that um oh it's actually currently sold out on their website i'm sure they'll make more but that is bad um, that it is sold out already. And then they also had uh, Terra Nil, which is not a new... It's not out yet, I don't believe, but it's not a... It, that game has, has made the rounds for... I know I know Jesse Vitelli, friend of the show, has already played that, and I believe written a preview for it um, over at Prima Games. But it is what he describes as a reversed city builder, which is just the idea and concept of that game is very enticing to me. And it's something I've, I've been hoping I'd get to check out at some point. Um, so hopefully soon. 
And yeah. That's what I got. What was uh the other is it Curse of the Sheep? Oh Call Curse of the Lamb. Call to the Lamb. Call yeah. the Lamb. That was close. Yeah, that was it. That was <laughs> yeah, another yeah. one that I would have as close as you can get while being entirely wrong. I would have definitely checked out if we were given if uh if circumstances were different. Um I don't know too much about it, but it was definitely something that I would have uh got some hands on time with if things were different. Yes, Eric, you did hear WrestleQuest. Do you need to come in here and spread the good word of WrestleQuest before we wrap things up? Do you want to come in here and be the WrestleQuest correspondent? The WrestleQuest? Nope, not going to try to make that into a pun. Okay. Not going to happen. Just going to... I told Mike this this weekend. I need to realize, hopefully beforehand, I start saying something and it is not going to work, that I just need to stop saying it. And just let let it not be the thing that comes out of my mouth or into my brain. Just whenever you come up with something like that, instead of saying it out loud, just count to three. And if you still think it's worth saying after three, hold on to it for another two seconds. Um, something, and me. something Michael once told me. Uh, Eric, whenever, I... whenever I want to say something out loud, I have to think to myself, "Would an idiot say this?" <laughs> and if an idiot would say this, I do not mm -hmm. say that. Oh okay. well. I should probably not uh, not speak at all anymore. Uh, Eric Van Allen from Destructoid in the press pool said, uh, it's good, and yes, it has real wrestlers, Jake the Snake, Macho Man, Jeff Jarrett, etc. I believe Jeff Jarrett was at PAX at the booth. He um, was. I, so, I did forget that. Yeah. So that was one that would have been nice to check out. Uh, there were, I mean, there were, there were definitely other games that I, I wanted to uh, check out. Um, there were two at the XSeed booth that looked like my jam uh i know eric just wrote about one potionomics and i forget what the other one was i don't know but now we're just saying names of games that we didn't actually play so we're not really being any any help to anybody nope oh okay okay whoa all right what you getting some information oh I, I saw i saw eric pop in i was gonna pull him in i don't i, I, I don't know but yeah so i think uh i think that's a good place to probably wrap things up i i went to limited run games and whew, they got their hooks in me now mike you're a bad influence what did Wait, i do how many games did you buy i i was looking i was like how many games did i actually buy i think i purchased two games. I walked away with three because I was gifted a copy of Match Point, but I think I only purchased two games. Which were a limited run copy of Scott Pilgrim, which I purchased, put down, and then immediately just bought the digital copy for $5. So, yeah. was that? And then Backyard um, whatever, which is in a... So you bought, so you bought one limited run game. Mm-hmm. But Brendan just told, called you the bad influence. For buying, I was the bad influence because I couldn't. A dozen. I couldn't even tell you where the limited run booth was, and I ended up there multiple times because of him. Because and I'm of me. the bad influence. Because of me. Listen, hold on, Mike. Hold, hold the phone. I just want to point out that when I was mm -hmm. getting out of my car today, I reached mm -hmm. over to take out take out my iPad, take out my phone. And I looked down, and I saw a sheet of paper that was tucked tucked in between the console and, and the passenger chair. You know what that sheet of paper mm -hmm. was? You tell. It was the sheet of paper that you handed to me in the car on Thursday when we were eating lunch. And that sheet of paper has a list of all the limited run games that were available at the booth. And prior mm -hmm. to that paper coming into my car, you know how many games I bought? Mm -hmm. One game. One mm -hmm. little old game. But after that lunch, after that paper, it was like, you know what? I could I could do two Shantae games. Then we walked over, you know, we went we were over at the Shan Chi booth and you know, Dom calls you. Dom's like, Oh, it would have burned by and you know what Mike said? Mike said, Burn bought like nine games. I had bought three games at that point. I had bought three games 
And you know yeah, what? How many games did you buy? But you know what Mike did in saying that? It made me think, well, maybe I should oh, buy I, nine I games. Six more games. Yeah, maybe I should buy more. nine games. And that's... I, like, I, can't I don't want to walk Mike, out of I it. Should... <laughs> go back there and buy more games. Mike was on the phone with you. <laughs> he gets off the phone, turns around, and I was like, Mike, I made a mistake. And I just pulled up a bag of games. And that's what happens when Mike's a bad influence. To be fair, Mike also you... texted me the list of limited run games, and I bought zero games. Yeah, but you're a strong-willed man. I'm just a weak little boy. Yeah. And to be fair, I only had the paper. The paper that got lost in Brennan's car, apparently, was only in my possession because he handed it to me. That is also true. I didn't say... I didn't, I didn't know the, I didn't know what the papers were. I didn't know anything about the booth. He's like, hey, here's this. I was like, oh, all right. I was the guy that was... I was just the guy with the bag. It's true. And that's I the brought, other thing. You had I the bag. the bag for me. You had... I brought the bag for me. You had the bag. If you didn't have the bag, I would have been less likely to say, Mike, you want to just throw that in your bag for me? Think about it. I had to carry my own things, and you're like, well, let me capitalize on this. Yeah, but like, what things were you buying? The jacket you never bought? I don't want to hear it. Yeah, I didn't have room in my bag because I was carrying all your shit. Oh, that's not why you didn't buy it. That's not why you didn't buy it. Did you tell Dom you went back to buy it and it was sold out? Yeah, he did. Yeah. You bought Dom an Arby shirt, though. Right. To walk home in the cold because I went there with no jacket. Like, I'll just buy a jacket when I get there. That's how they catch you. All the jackets were sold out. Words of the wise: If you want to buy something at a convention, buy it. Buy it, buy the, it the first time. time. Not, not. Don't wait three days later. You will be mistaken if they have it in stock still. I, I also held on buying the Cadence, uh, the Crypt of the Necro Dancer vinyl. Also sold out. Mike and I got burned on the same day. I wonder what would have happened if we didn't waste the last thirty minutes of the previous day saying like, "Oh, do we go down there and buy stuff now?" Like, do. You, Realistically, you would have had a jacket. Or sold it. You would have had a jacket. They would have been. They probably wouldn't have had my size. I feel like that's probably the, okay. Same that possible. that could be potentially true, simply because it's clothing. But I think the vinyl still would have been there. Because might not have had your size. Yeah, they didn't have my yeah. size in the vinyl. Extra um, large vinyl. But anyways, that's extra uh, medium. I think that'll do it for our Pax East 2022. I mean, it was not a normal show. Things are still not normal. Things are still, you know, there's a lot of things going on. People people that we know have, have are currently testing, well, one person that we know currently tested positive um, post-show. So hopefully that does not mean that we are all going to be in a similar boat. But, you know, things are not fully, fully back to where things need to be. So hopefully by the next time the convention rolls around, we will be in that space uh, at a full capacity where we can cover all the lovely indie games that are strewn about and give some better, more in-depth coverage of the things that you should be keeping your eyes and ears open for. But uh, I will say, I feel very, very confident in Lucid being the thing that, if anything, from PAX East 2022, keep Lucid on your radar. With that being said, uh, I feel like it wasn't right for us to do fucking what's in the box because Todd isn't here but I can mm -hmm. I can pull three right now if we want to do it without Todd no that's fine we can skip this week or we can do Todd? we can yeah we'll we'll, we'll 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 skip it for now but in the future we may not do that but we'll we'll skip it for now this is, this is a lot of factors here it was a PAX episode Todd didn't go to PAX it's a Monday night so I feel like there were a lot of things stacked up against Todd I feel like that might be unfair but if this happens again you guys get the points. I also have was noodling around with the idea of after this season of what's in the box ends doing like a, what if we change a little bit of the dynamic of the game and not make it uh everyone gets their own score, but it's the group, the group together figures out the game. Cause I think that will allow us to dig a little bit deeper into the, the shelf here. So it would be it would become a, a group point and not like Mike's, you know, in third, Dom's in, in first situation. We'll see. Doesn't need to be decided now. We'll see how the season plays out. Uh but thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode, episode three eleven 
of the Passing Controller podcast. If you're a friend of the show, fan of the show, want to help support the show, you can do that in a bunch of different ways. Passingcontroller.threadless.com. Get yourself some sick swag. Subscribe to us on Twitch, YouTube, Patreon, patreon.com slash passingcontroller. Share the show with a friend. Share the show on social media. Leave us a review wherever reviews can be left. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else. Just listen to the show. Just tell something about the show. Let people know that we're here. And we'll keep doing the damn thing. You can find me at Bgroom. You can find Mike at underscore Michael Path. You can find Dom at PTC underscore One Little Spark. And again, thanks for listening. Until next time.